Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining this morning. Let's make a start on the Srimad Bhagavatam Sangha and attentive Japa. And uh, Pundi Kaksha Prabhu was saying he always looks forward to the at least the the Japa we do together. We do Japa in the morning and then he really enjoy the Japa we do here. So hopefully he'll be joining in a few minutes, but let's make a start. So today so wrapping up on the Priyavrat uh, dynasty, so we talk about so many uh, uh, personalities from the, especially Bharat Maharaj, you know, very, very important uh, for lesson for us. So which one of the glories of descendants of King Priyavrat. So early in the week, uh, we were discussing Actually, uh, Puri Mataji mentioned Raj Rishis. So, Raj Rishis, very important that whoever is, is in charge, that there should be saintly kings or saintly nowadays prime ministers who can do good for the country. Instead of, you know, we find that a lot of the leaders that they tend to extort and, uh, you know, take advantage of their position. So it's nice that uh, you know we can have that Raj Rishi um, situation. So there are so many Raj Rishis in uh, Shri Bhagavatam. To name a few, like uh, there's Maharaj Katfanga, Maharaj Janak, Ram we discussed, uh, Maharaj Prithu, Yudhishthir, and uh, Priyavrat himself, and also one of his uh, descendants by name of King Gaya. Gaya. So, we'll continue. So, Lord Vishnu and his expansions were meant to protect the universe are always situated in the transcendental mode of goodness known as Vishuddha Sattva. Being the direct expansion of Lord Vishnu, King Gaya was also situated in the Vishuddha Sattva. Because of this, Maharaj Gaya was fully equipped with transcendental knowledge. Therefore, he was called Mahapurush. So this is a descendant of Priyavar. After a few dynasties, uh, or a few uh, generations down the line. So Sri Prabhupada mentions that from this verse, it appears that the incarnations of God are various. Some are part and parcel of the direct expansion. Some are direct expansions of Lord Vishnu. A direct incarnation of the Supreme Person of Godhead is called Amsha or Swa Amsha. Whereas an incarnation of Amsha is called Kala. Among the Kalas, are, there are the Vibhin Namshas, Jivas or living entities. These are counted among the Jiva Tattvas. Now those who come directly from Lord Vishnu are called Vishnu Tattvas. So the expansion is coming directly from Lord Vishnu, Vishnu Tattva, and the ones who are not direct or are living entities, they, they are uh, Jiva Tattvas. Another name for Krishna is Mahapurush, and a devotee is sometimes also called, but the devotee is sometimes called Mahapurushka, Purushika. Although generally the people refer to each other as Mahapurush, but the devotee is called as Mahapurushika. So let's pray. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kroti Vachalam. Pangum Langyate Grim. Yad Kirpatam. Hamande Shri Guru Deem Taranam. Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chitana Ishram. Narayam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotvam Devim Sasvit Vyasam Tato Jema Duriyat Nasta Prishabhadureshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shlokya Bhakti Bhavati Neste Ki Jai. So King Gaya gave full protection and security to the citizens. So we talk about his, pers his personality or his qualities. King Gaya gave full protection and security to the citizens so that their personal property would not be disturbed by undesirable elements. He also saw that there was sufficient food to feed all citizens. He would sometimes distribute gifts to the citizen to satisfy them. 
He would sometimes call meetings and sat satisfy the citizens with sweet words. He would also give them good instruction how to become first class citizens. Such were the characteristics of King Gaya's royal order. So they have to do so many things to satisfy or keep them satisfied enough from time to time on a periodic uh, intervals. They have to make sure that they're doing something for the citizens, keep them excited, keep, keep them inspired. Besides all this, King Gaya was a householder who strictly observed the rules and regulations of household life. He performed sacrifices and was an unalloyed pure devotee or the supreme personality of Godhead. He was called Mahapurush because as a king, he gave the citizens all facilities. And as a householder, he executed all his duties so that at the end, he became strict devotee of the Supreme Lord. So as a devotee, he was always ready to give respect to other devotees and to engage in the devotional service of the Lord. So these are like lessons for us as a devotee. Respect all of the devotees and engage in devotional service. This is the Bhakti Yoga process. Due to all these transcendental activities, King Gaya was always free from the body conception. He was full in Brahman realization and consequently he was always jubilant. He did not experience material limitation. Although he was perfect in all respects, he was not proud, nor was he anxious to rule the kingdom. So he was not proud and he was not attached to anything, especially the kingdom that, oh, I'm a king and I, I have so much opulence. He was not attached to the kingdom. As Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, when he descends to the earth, he has two types of business to give protection to the faithful and inhalate the demons. Pritranaya sadhuna vinashaya chadduskritam. Since the king is a rep representative of the Supreme Person of Godhead, he is sometimes called Nardeva. That is the Lord as a human being. So, you know, we're discussing Sri Ramchandar early in the week. So this is very appropriate because Ramchandar, he came you know, it's all about uh, good over evil, wasn't it? We're celebrating good over evil. And he destroyed the demon like Ravan and many others. And you know, this is why we remember him that he he, he did, you know, wonderful pastimes and he and he did so much for the for you know, mankind when he was here. And he comes a human being showing human qualities as well, you know, human emotions. And which are actually lessons for us that we, we don't get into that trap because this is what happens. As you know, we, sometimes we, we don't realize ourselves, or we see some ordinary people doing something, we don't realize. But when you see an exalted person falling into the trap, you think, Oh, this is so dangerous, you know, that uh, if, we, if it can happen to this person, then who am I? You know? So they, they set examples, they show us it's dangerous. <clears throat> According to the Vedic injunctions, he is worshipped as God on the material platform. So Nardev, the Lord as you being, is called is worshipped as God on the material platform. As a representative of the Supreme Lord, the king had the duty to protect the citizens in a perfect way, so that they would not be anxious for food and protection, and so that they would be jubilant. The king would supply everything for their benefit. And because of this, he would levy taxes. So take taxes, but then you give back and make sure everybody has enough to eat, and food, shelter, accommodation, everything. If the king or government otherwise levies taxes on the citizens, he becomes responsible for the sinful activities of the citizens. So he must give back. In Kali Yuk, Monarchy is abolished because the kings themselves are subjected to the influence of Kalyug. It is understood from the Ramayan that when Babishan became friends with Lord Ramchandran, he promised that if by chance or will he, will he if he, by chance he breaks the laws of friendship with Lord Ramchandran, he would become a Brahman or a king in Kalyug. So there's no very good reputation of the Brahmins or kings in Kalyuk. 
In this age, as Vishen indicated, both Brahmanas and kings are in a wretched condition. Actually, there are no kings or Brahmanas in this age. And due to the absence, the whole world is in a chaotic condition and is always in distress. Compared to present standards, Maharaj Gaya was a true representative of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, he was known as Mahapurush. My dear King Prikshit, so this is uh, Sukhdeva Goswami explaining. My dear King Prikshit, those who are learned scholars in the histories of the Puranas utilize and glorify King Gaya with the following verses. Now, we have to understand Maharaj Prikshit, he's got seven days to live and he's listening to the Shiva Bhagavatam. So if uh, King Prikshit is talking about Maharaj Gaya, then he must be important, right? Because he can't talk about unimportant things. There's only seven days. You know, we, we might have two, three years to read the Bhagavatam, but Maharaj Prikshit only has seven days, so he has to hear. You know, everything that's in the Bhagavatam is, is important, uh, is put in the, you know, given to him as important. <clears throat> the historical references to exotic kings serve as good example for present rulers. So, those who are ruling the world at the present moment should take lessons from King Gaya. So, in a way, we are all leaders or something or other, right? Those who are ruling the world at the present moment should take lessons from King Gaya, King Yudhishthir, and King Prithu. So we should take lessons from King Gaya, King Yudhishthir, and King Prithu Maharaj and rule the citizens so that they'll be happy. Presently, the governments are levying taxes without improving the citizens in any culture, religious, social, or political way. According to the Vedas, this is not recommended. So the Great King Gaya used to perform all kinds of Vedic rituals. He was highly intelligent and expert in studying all the Vedic literatures. He maintained religious principles and possessed all kinds of opulence. He was a leader among gentlemen and a servant of the devotees. He was a totally qualified plenary expansion of the Spirit Person of God and therefore who could equal him in the performance of gigantic ritualistic ceremonies? <clears throat> All the chest and honest daughters of Maharaj Daksh, such as Sharda, Maitri, and Daya, whose blessings were always effective, bathed Maharaj Gaya with sanctified water. Indeed, they were very satisfied with Maharaj Gaya. The planet Earth person personified came as a cow, and so she saw her calf. She delivered milk profusely when she saw all the good qualities of Maharaj Gaya. In other words, Maharaj Gaya was able to derive all benefits from the earth and thus satisfy the desires of his citizens. However, he personally had no desire. So everything was everything he was doing, he was doing for the benefit of his citizens. The earth of which Maharaj Gaya ruled is compared to a cow. So it is a metaphor. <clears throat> of a cow. A cow delivers milk in the presence of her calf. Similarly, the cow or earth fulfills the desires of Maharaj Gaya, who was able to utilize all the resources of the earth to benefit his citizens. So the earth, you know, provides with uh, crops, fruits, minerals, so many things. This was possible because he was based in sanctified water by the honest daughters of Daksh. Unless a king or ruler is blessed by authorities, <coughs> excuse me, he cannot rule the citizens very satisfactorily. Through the good qualities of the ruler, the citizens became very happy and well qualified. So, although King Gaya had no personal desire for sense gratification, all his desires were, for, were fulfilled by the virtue of his performance of Vedic rituals. All the kings with whom Maharaj Gaya had to fight were forced to fight on religious princi uh, principles. They were very satisfied with his fighting and they would present all kinds of gifts to him. Similarly, all the Brahmanas in his kingdom were very satisfied with King Gaya's munificent charities. Consequently, the Brahmanas contributed six of their pious activities for King Gaya's benefit in the next life. <clears throat> so only 
God himself, you know, they can please everyone, even the enemy. They can please everyone. We, you know, we 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 not uh, we can only try to do our best, do what we can. But you know, this is like the perfect example, the benchmark. But uh, you know, we we please one person and upset the other one, usually the way. As the Kshatriya or Emperor, Maharaj Gaya sometimes had to fight with subordinate kings to maintain his government. But the subordinate kings were not dissatisfied with him because they knew that he fought for religious principles. Consequently, they accepted the subordination and offered all kinds of gifts to him. Similarly, the Brahmins who performed Vedic rituals were so satisfied with the king that they were readily agreed to part with the sixth of their past activities for his benefit in the next life. Thus, the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas were all satisfied with Maharaj Gaya because of, his, because of his proper administration. In other words, Maharaj Gaya satisfied the Kshatriya kings by his fighting and satisfied the Brahmanas by his charities. The Vaishyas were also encouraged by King come with kind words and affectionate dealings. And due to Maharaj Gaya's constant sacrifices, the Shudras were satisfied by sumptuous food and charity. In this way, Maharaj Gaya kept all the citizens very satisfied. When Brahmanas and saintly persons were, are honored, they part with their pious activities, giving them to those who honor them and render them service. Therefore, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidi Rani Patena Paripashanena Sevya. One should try to approach the spiritual master submissively and render service unto him. Because if you do that, then he will give you his blessings, which will be very beneficial going ahead, you know, for progressing in bhakti. So it's important we serve the senior Vaishnavas and the exalted devotees, and we will definitely get benefit from that. It's automatic we get benefit from that, the blessings. In Maharaj Gaya's sacrifices, there was a great supply of the intoxicant known as Soma. King Indra used to come and become intoxicated by drinking large quantities of Soma Ras. Also, the Supreme Person of Godhead, O Lord Vishnu, also came and personally accepted all the sacrifices because he the Yagya Purush offered to, onto him with pure and firm devotion in the sacrificial arena. Maharaj Gaya was so perfect that he satisfied all the demigods who were headed by the heavenly king, Indra. Lord Vishnu himself also personally came to the sacrificial arena to accept the offerings. Although Maharaj Gaya did not want them, he received all the blessings of the demigods and the Supreme Lord himself. When the Supreme Lord is pleased by a person's actions, automatically all the demigods, human beings, animals, birds, trees, creepers, trees, grass, and all other living entities, beginning with the Lord Brahma, are pleased. The Supreme Person of Godhead is the super soul of everyone, and he is by nature fully pleased. Nonetheless, he came to the arena of Maharaj Gaya and said, I am fully pleased. He's by nature fully pleased, but he, then he comes to his uh, assembly, his arena, and he says, I, I am pleased. It is explicitly stated here in that simply by satisfying the Supreme Person of Godhead, one satisfies the demigods and all of the living entities without differentiation because they're all part, they're different parts of, uh, of God, you know, of his body. If one pours water on the root of a tree, all the branches, twigs, flowers, and leaves are nourished, so they're like his branches and twigs and flowers. Although the Supreme Lord is self-satisfied, he was so pleased with the behavior of Maharaj Gaya that he personally came to the sacrificial arena and said, I am fully satisfied. Who can compare to Maharaj Gaya? <clears throat> so just a little bit more. It's mentioned that in the womb of Gayanti, Maharaj Gaya begot three sons named Chitratha, Sugati, and Avrodhan. In the womb of his wife, Urna, Chitratha begot a son named Samrat. The wife of Samrat was Utkala. And in her womb, Samrat begot a son named Marichi. In the womb of his wife, Bindumati, Marichi begot a son named Bindu. In the womb of his wife, Saraga, Bindu begot a son named Madhu. 
in the womb of his wife named Sumana. And there is a reason for mentioning all this. You know, it comes to a point. Madhu begot a son named Viravrat in the womb of his wife Bhoja. Viravrat begot two sons named Mantu and Pramantu. In the wife, in the womb of his wife, Satya Mantu begot a son named Bhavan. And in the womb of his wife, Dushana, Bhavan begot a son named Twista. So this is descendants and descendants. In the womb of his wife, Virochana, Twista begot a son named Viraj. The wife of Viraj was Vishuchi, and in her womb, Viraj begot 100 sons and one daughter of all the sons. The son named Satyajit was predominant. There is a famous verse about King Viraj because of his high qualities and wide fame. King Viraj became the jewel of the dynasty of King Priyavrat, just as Lord Vishnu. By his tongue and potency, decorates and blesses the demigods. <coughs> Within a garden, a flowering tree attains a good reputation because of its fragrant flowers. Similarly, if there is a famous man in a family, and obviously famous for good reasons, not for bad reasons, he is compared to a fragrant flower in a forest. Because of him, an entire family can become famous in history. Because Lord Krishna took birth in the Yadu dynasty, the Yadu dynasty and the Yadavs have remained famous for all time. Because of King Viraj's appearance, the family of Maharaj Priyavat has remained famous for all time. King Uttanpat ruled over the universe because his elder brother Priyavat practiced austerity from the very beginning of his life. So Maharaj uh, originally just Priyavat or you could say sage Priyavart, he, he was doing meditation, he was doing austerity, he wasn't interested in any rulership or uh, you know, any kingdoms. But then he was asked by Lord Brahma and his father Manu to rule the kingdom because there was no suitable king left. So Maharaj Priyavart, descendants now, you know, because he ruled and he, he had progeny, you know, we have talked about king. Lord Rishabhadev, the nine Yugendras, Maharaj Bharat, Maharaj Gaya, and now King Viraj as well. So it was an amazing transformation. And, uh, you know, it, it brought about so many great personalities just by... And you could also say because they were Kshatriyas, and we've been talking a lot about this, because they were Kshatriyas, that was really his duty to rule Kshatriya shouldn't really, although he was he was like behaving like a Brahman, right? Because he had Uttanpada as his brother ruling. But Kshatriya's duty is to rule and to fight. That's his rule, just like uh, Krishna told Arjun that you should be fighting. You shouldn't. You can't. You can't go to a forest and you know do your meditation and obtain in knowledge. That that's that's not that's not you. You have the, your purification comes from fighting and ruling. So similarly, Priyavarat, when he ruled the kingdom and he, and he ruled so nicely, so many personalities came in that kingdom. So many descendants. So thank you so much for joining. Hina Mataji, Jai Prabhu, Madhav Shamsundar Prabhu, Martha Prabhu, Praveen Mataji, Sarvashya Mataji. And uh, love to hear your views on this. Uh, <laughs> Sarvashya Mataji, what do you think? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everybody. Well, I mean, this is very exalted business dynasty because uh, Gaya Maharaj came from uh, Manu's dynasty. His grandfather was uh, from Bhavmani. And uh, in his previous, previous yugas, the kings were called Raj Rishis. Uh, they were devotees of the Lord and they followed um, Bhagavad Dharma and uh, uh, they believe in God and they make sure that the they, they citizens follow, follow the king. They also become devotees of Krishna. That was the main thing in previous eagles. 
and the citizens became all got coins that they come in the Lord Sanders and the, 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 they were all got conscious. Uh, the citizens were very happy, but in Chaliug, one, I mean, they're not happy because they're not protected. I mean, in the name we got only the name king or queen, only name safe, but they don't protect the um, uh, citizens. We are, we are all suffering, people are suffering, stealing things because no, but they just, it, it, it is called mm. And the uh, citizens are, we are always in fear. And uh, in that time, people, people were all fearless. They were because they know they are protected properly. So they were fearless, but we are all in fear. And then uh, sometimes uh, the king, uh, they used to send the ministers to go and uh, see, disguise themselves and see how the citizens are, they are happy or they're not happy, and then come and they report it to the king. And uh, the, these Rajishis, they don't make their own decision. They had their guru. If they want to do anything, they go to the gurus and ask advice from the gurus what to do. And because the gurus were very learned, very intelligent people, they have read the Vedas, they have seen the truth. Gurus have seen the truth, so they go and ask the advice. And uh, what, what Guru tells them, they, they did it. Like uh, when uh, Bishwam Mitra went to Raja Dasarath and he wanted to take Ram Lakshman to the forest. King wasn't very, Raja Dasarath was very, wasn't very happy because he loved Lord Ram very much. But then he asked advice from Basish Muni. And Basish Muni, he advised uh, Dasarath to send Ram Chandra. So they can never say no to the Guru. So in Kalyug, it's just only the king or queen is just a, some symbol. But we have not real king or queen who like a previous ages. You can, they make them, they taste the text, but they give so much benefit out of the text. But here yeah, we buy the text, we don't get the benefit. It's just keep on buying text, text, text. And uh, so it's so different in Kalyug. Brahmanas and kings are not like uh, what we read in Bhagavatam. So it's so amazing to hear how the kings were at that time and how the people were happy in the Yugas. But we are so unfortunate to be born in Kalyug, but we got one thing very good. Um, so they say it's the easiest way to go to back to Godhead that chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which the other previous yugas, it was very hard. You do tapasya, you do yagya, or you do something. But, but still, people we are uh, very lazy, forgetful, in Kalyu. So we can't do all them things. Everybody is just, it's not, not like the other yugas. It's Kali, Kali means it's a dark age. So, but still, we've got. So Mahaprabhu came in this is golden age, you know, he wants to take people, you know, to his, like Sati Gotreka Dham uh, Yuga and just chant uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And uh, we try to do what we can do, but then it's uh, just believe in Bhagavatam, say Bhagavatam is the mighty. Uh, which can take you to Krishna because Bhagavatam when uh, Maharaj Parishti, I mean, the, he, he had seven days to leave and he, he asked uh, um, Goswami what person should do. He said they should, should read Bhagavatam and hear the pastimes of Krishna. So Bhagavatam we can as good as we live in Sati Uttreta, if you read that every day. So that's why we, we there was, there were things were very, very exalted because they were representative of God. A king should be representative of God. But now this in Kali is very different uh, story altogether. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much, Mataji. Yeah, Shri Bhagavatam is, you know, telling us about the, the other yugas. And uh, at least, you know, we have Prabhupada's reports, you know, who compares the other yugas with the with the where we are now, Kal Yuga, how we you know how we are living and what we you know what to expect in this yuga. So you know, we're able to make a comparison. Thank you so much. Pundri Kakshru, Hare Krishna. Hey, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Um I felt like um when when listening to this past time, I felt like we are not the kings, but at least we are the king of our own family. Um, I feel like that. So it is showing how well you need to respect the, all the family members okay. and uh, also meet them with the sweet words and uh, make them happy and you are happy. Then you can spread that happiness outside as well. And uh, so that these people, they are actually householders, but still the king is able to take, the, take care of the entire uh, citizens and uh, meet them take care of their, I mean, giving them sufficient food, making sure that they have property, they are very, very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all, Prabhuji. I mean, I think it's a lesson for our congregation level itself, uh, because in our congregation, like, we, it is easy to blame somebody that they're not doing anything, but everybody, they're they are householder by themselves. But still, there in our congregation, we can see Radhyatra is happening in a coronavirus situation also. So our leaders are really doing so good. And uh, we are able to enjoy festivals. We are able to meet. Uh, everything we are able to do, even in any worse situation. So all credit goes to our leaders and you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, bro. Uh, yeah. Uh, just going back to the kings, the saintly kings. Uh, I mean, you're right. Uh, you know, we can do a little bit in our little circle that we have, at least, you know, everybody does their little bit, then, you know, the world is a better place. So, you know, we, we can learn from these scriptures and and at least change ourselves. We can't change other people. The change begins with ourselves. So, you know, we can, we can do that. And uh, yes, previously that the kings were taking care of everything. Like uh, when Arjun mentioned that traditions will be lost, you know, if all the all the elderly people die, you know, mm -hmm. we lose all, all the traditions. And Krishna says that uh, we have Maharaj Yudhishthir in his saintly king. He will make sure no traditions are lost. You know, like we mentioned about the Grastas, that he will educate everyone. You know what, how to do this. You know what what's expected and what traditions are. He will make mm -hmm. sure traditions keep going. So, which he probably did at the time, you know, because a lot of elders were were dead, and uh, the the new generations that they they didn't they 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 didn't they weren't brought up with, you know, somebody to advise them, but they had Maharaj Yudhishthir, and uh, you know, he must set up uh, institutions where they, where they could learn these things and how to you know, be good citizens. And uh, about you know what traditions they have to follow. Thank you so much. Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you for the class. Sorry, I, uh, I haven't got any points. I was distracted in the class. But thank you. I'm just listening to the realizations. Thank you. But you can tell us something about Raj Rishis. My mind is a bit. Uh... Okay. Okay. A little bit, you know, yeah, not in place. <laughs> Thank you, Ruji. <laughs> Thank you. Hina Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. <clears throat> Dandar Pradam. Please accept my humble obeisances. All closed. Thank you for the Prabhupad. Thank you for the class, Prabhu. Um, it's just reflecting on your initial points about the incarnations of the Lord and how and how the multi, you know, how, how many numerous incarnations he takes and Vishnu Tattvas and the Jiva Tattvas um, and how he comes for us, he comes to give protection to the devotees, to kill the demons, miscreants and how merciful he is um, and he comes to reclaim us lost souls <laughs> you know, you know we're, this is not our real home as as Mataji said as well, that you know, the greatest benediction of this age, you know, despite the fact that this is Kaliyug the greatest benediction that we have in this age is the, the chanting 
of the of the Maha Mantra, the holy names, um, and and our and our and our sastras. Um, so yeah, we, we're very very fortunate. Um, but it, it's the path is easy really for us. We just need to to, to take that path. Um, and I also like Babuji's point about how you know we are all leaders in some capacity as he mentioned like after you know in our families you could be the leader in the family um but in the same sense maybe at work and in different social settings um so it's important to lead by our own example to you know to try to be an ideal devotee and through and through that people we we can show people they, they can learn from our example thank you so much Prabhuji. thank you Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I think Swishi Mataji mentioned that uh, if you have saintly people in the family, then the generations will also follow the example. And you see that you know, in families who are like very loving, very caring, you find the children tend to be very loving and caring as well. Uh, at least this is what I've noticed. You know, that the, the whole family be like that. You know, they're very together. And the ones who don't get on, and then the kids get the same uh, vibe, you know, the the... The, the attitude, the culture is the same going down the line. So some families see them very, very together and uh, they get on so well and they really look after each other and the children will be doing the same with their cousins as well. And, and it goes on to, you know, to the further generation. So very important to set a great example for your children uh, so that they can behave, you know, show them, by example, as you said, that how, how to behave and how to interact with the uh, with your family with your friends like that yeah thank you so much okay so jay prabhu he's he's given us some summaries the sandy king gay was gaya was a direct descendant of bharat, Mar, uh, bharat maharaj coming several generations below him yeah king gaya was a mahapurush as a king he gave all the facilities and protected his citizens and as a householder, he followed all the rules and regulations. So a devotee, he always gave, as a devotee, he always gave respect to other devotees and engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. King Gaya was a leader among men and a servant of the devotees. He was, in fact, a plenary expansion of Lord Vishnu. Although he was perfect in all respects, he did not have any pride. So, yeah, he's a very empowered <clears throat> devotee, a very empowered king, uh, just like Maharaj uh, Vithu. So, yeah, brilliant. This is what we need and, you know, set exam great examples for us of what, you know, how to do things. So, thank you so much. Uh, now, we can do some chanting. Uh, Sivashi Mataji and Prabhupada Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.